It's getting colder. Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k. It is our countdown to Christmas and today is the 5th of December. So we've got two Necron units pitted up against each other today and I'm going to go through which ones I prefer and why basically. The advantages and the disadvantages of taking those units. Just a little bit of fun heading into Christmas Day. Now I haven't done this plug yet guys within this series but if you could kindly check out our members area for as little as a dollar you can join the members area where you get your loyalty badge next to your name in the comments. You also get a unique rank within our Discord server and you also get VIP access in the VIP members areas of that Discord server as well. And of course these donations all add up to the upkeep of running this channel and things like this giveaway. In fact if you don't know about the giveaway you should do by now but all you need to do is comment which unit you prefer in this video, make sure you like the video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel to be in with the chance of winning this Combat Patrol Necron box. Right, so let's get into today's video then. It's the Doomsday Arc against the Canoptic Doom Stalker. <laughs> so a slight difference in points. Doomsday Arc is 160 points. The Canoptic Doom Stalker is 130 points. So there is only a 30 points difference between these two heavy support options. So first of all, let's look at the stats and compare the numbers. So the Doomsday Arc has got a 12 inch movement as opposed to a 10 inch movement with a Canoptic Doom Stalker. Now to be honest with you, is it really relevant? Not really, they need to stay stationary in order to use their best profile weapon. We'll get onto that later in this video. Second of all, the Doomsday Arc's got a 3 plus ballistic skill, whereas the Canoptic Doomstalker has got a 4 plus. Now the Canoptic Doomstalker's ballistic skill will stay at a 4 plus throughout even though it is bracketed, whereas with the Doomsday Arc, once it does get bracketed, it goes to a 4 plus and then a 5 plus. So bear that one in mind. We'll talk about that in the advantages section for the Doomstalker. And then finally, as for the wounds, the Doomsday Arc has 14, Canoptic Doomstalker only has 12. Now there is one stat here that the Canoptic Doomstalker does actually win on and it's the weapon skill. It's got a weapon skill value of a 4 plus, don't really know why, it doesn't do much in melee at all, neither of them do in fact, but we're going to mention it today. That's one little point for the Canoptic Doomstalker but really I would score this one to that Doomsday Arc. Next we're going to talk about resiliency, now the Doomsday Arc has got the Quantum Shield ability of course. So it can't be wounded on less than a 4+, plus, and it's got that 5 plus invulnerable save. Now the Canoptic Doomstalker doesn't have quantum shielding. However, it does have the Containment Field save, which is a 4 plus invulnerable save. So it can be wounded on less than a 4+, plus, but it's got a better invun save. I'm not sure which way I'd swing on that one, I don't know which one's better. You'll have to let me know down in the comments below. Now as for other unique abilities, well the Doomsday Arc has got the Quantum Deflection Stratagem for a command point which makes that Quantum Shield Invun save go from a 5 plus Invun to a 4 plus Invun save, which actually will then match the Containment Field, but you have to pay a command point to do that, of course. Now, as for the Canoptic Doomstalker, it's got the Sentinel Construct ability. So if a friendly Necrons unit within 6 inches of the Doomstalker gets charged, you can effectively fire free Overwatch as if you were the unit that was getting charged. And this isn't going to cost you a command point. This isn't the Overwatch stratagem, so you still have the option of using the Overwatch stratagem alongside this ability. And just bear in mind, when you are doing this, you are using your highest profile as well. And as for the unique stratagem for the Doomstalker, well, it's got Revenge of the Doomstalker. Another one, which is one command point. It's when you lose a Dynasty character from the table, you can shoot as if it was your own shooting phase with the Doomstalker. You're going to be using your highest profile, and also it's a plus one to the hit roll against that said unit that destroyed your character. Just bear in mind that they've got to be eligible for your attack, and of course your Doomstalker can't be in engagement range in order to do that. So as far as the unique abilities go, I think I would score that to the Canoptic Doomstalker. And yeah, that stratagem is pretty good for the Doomsday Arc with the Quantum Deflection, but the Doomstalker has this naturally, so I think the Doomstalker wins on that one. Right, let's talk about damage. Now both of these units have kind of got identical weapons, don't they? Strength 10, minus 5 AP and D6 damage with the Blast keyword. So as we're not comparing these units to other units within the codex, they're just being compared to each other. There's no real point of actually discussing those two guns. However, the Doomsday Arc has got the Gorse Flayer Arrays. So there's either going to be 10 shots or 20 shots depending on the rapid fire range. And that's the equivalent of 10 Necron Warriors with the Gorse Flayers. Whereas the Gnoptic Doomstalker does have the Gorse Flayers but you're only getting 2 to 4 shots, again depending on rapid fire range. So that's another reason for paying the 30 points extra. You're getting quite a lot of extra shots here with the Doomsday Arc. So that one is an easy win for the Doomsday Arc I guess. Right, let's talk about unique synergy to each of the units. So the Doomsday Arc, of course it's a vehicle model, so that makes it a core unit. That means it's going to be synergizing with all the My Will Be Done units, such as your Overlord, your Command Barge, even your Silent King. And then other types of synergy would say with the Royal Warden, to bring it out of combat so they can still fire, all because it's a core unit. 
Not only that, going back to the fact that it's a vehicle model, it means the canoptic spiders can be using the fabricator chlorase to be healing it D3 lost wounds. Now, the canoptic doomstalker is not a vehicle, it's a monster. A few people have got that wrong in the past, including myself in fact. It is a monster, not a vehicle, so therefore it hasn't got the core keyword. It instead has the canoptic keyword, so it's going to be synergizing with technomancers for example, with the canoptic control node for a plus one to their hit rolls. So very similar to mine will be done, but don't forget canoptic units start on a 4 plus to hit as opposed to a 3 plus. Now to add to the synergy for the Canoptic Doomstalker, with the new Army of Renown Cult of the Cryptech, they are eligible to be selected for that army because of course the Canoptic keyword. That's something that the Doomsday Art cannot do, so it's worth mentioning that here. Now in fact, while we're on the subject of that Army of Renown, there is a stratagem available if you were to select a Canoptic Doomstalker, which is the Stalking Annihilator for one command point. And it effectively allows your Canoptic Doomstalker to be able to move and still fire its highest profile because this model as well as the Doomsday Arc in fact needs to stay stationary in order to use the strength 10 weapon. If it does move the weapon drastically decreases. So this is a way of getting into a better line of sight on enemy models and still firing with your best profile. Now in fact one last synergy for the Canoptic Doomstalker before we get into the next topic which is other Canoptic Doomstalkers. If you've got a triangle of three Canoptic Doomstalkers and an enemy unit has charged just one of them, or any other unit within six inches in fact, all three of these models can use their Sentinel Construct ability. Remember it's not an Overwatch, so it's not the stratagem being used which you can only use once per phase. This is not that, this is just a pure ability, so all of the Canoptic Doomstalkers can use it and fire Overwatch. So I think I'm going to score that one as a tie because the Doomsday Arc having the core keyword I think is pretty key. There's a lot more synergy that we haven't mentioned such as a Veil of Darkness Relic. Are you going to use that? Probably not to be honest with you. But there's all sorts of other things that relate to core. Whereas the Canoptic Doomstalker does also have some unique synergy here. But I'm going to go middle of the road with that one and call that one a tie. Let's talk about the overall purposes for both of these units. Well they're kind of very similar in fact. Both heavy supports that stay in your back lines with the strength 10 weapon. Not really moving much because if you do you lose your highest profile as mentioned. But you've got the added extra having that doomsday arc with the gorse flare arrays. So you can also target light infantry. In fact if a unit charges either one of these models you can't be firing your big weapon because it's got the blast keyword attached to both of them. So it can't be fired into engagement range. Whereas with the Doomsday Arc, you've got those Gorse Flare Arrays. So you're going to have 20 shots because that is within rapid fire range to at least try and eliminate those smaller infantry units. So I definitely think the Doomsday Arc fulfills the overall purpose that I'd want from a heavy support. Right, let's get on to the advantages and disadvantages of both the units. Starting off with the Doomsday Arc. So it's got a movement of 12 inches as opposed to 10, so it's moving a little bit quicker. Are you going to be moving it? Maybe, maybe not. The Ballistic Skill starts at a 3 plus so it's hitting better than a Canoptic unit. It's got 14 wounds as opposed to 12. It's got the Quantum Shielding ability, so it can't be wounded on less than a 4+. plus. It's also core, so it's synergizing with Mine Will Be Done and all sorts of other things, such as a Royal Warden. And then the added extra of 10 to 20 Gorse Flare shots, as well as obviously the big Strength 10 weapon. That's the advantages. What about the disadvantages? There's only a couple I've got here today. First of all, they're 30 points more. Now, you get quite a lot for your 30 points more, to be honest with you, but it still is 30 points more at the end of the day. If you are tight on points, you may not have the 30 points extra to upgrade a Doomstalker to a Doomsday Arc. And then finally, that Ballistic Skill does get bracketed from 3 plus to a 4 plus to even a 5 plus, which is something that the Canoptic Doomstalker's Ballistic Skill will never do. So that's the Doomsday Arc. What about the Doomstalker? Advantages are as follows. So they're 30 points cheaper, so it's going to save you on points. So if you didn't want to go too crazy on points with your heavy support options, yeah, 30 points right there. You can use that 30 points to get you a couple of Canoptic Scarabs or maybe a Scorbit Destroyer instead of having that Doomsday Arc upgrade. It's got the Canoptic Synergy, which of course the Doomsday Arc doesn't have, and it's always going to hit on a 4 plus at range, and that will never degrade. Then finally, it can be used in the Cult of the Cryptech, which I'm not sure if it's too competitive at the moment, but yeah, you've got the extra option if you wanted to. That's the advantages, what about the disadvantages? So we've got not a vehicle, so it's not core. Cool. It's a monster, unfortunately. It's got less weaponry at range, only two to four Gorse Flare shots. Then finally, it's got no quantum shielding. Now, although it does have the containment field save, it still can be wounded on less than a four plus. So that's the two units all summed up in terms of the comparison anyway. Which one would I go for if I had to build a list around one of these models? I'm not really keen on the Canoptic Doomstalker if I'm honest with you. I mean both of them I'm not keen on because you're getting D6 shots with both of them, D6 damage with both of them. But at least with the Doomsday Arc, you've got those Gorse Flare Arrays and you don't necessarily need to use the big weapon. You could treat it like a Ghost Arc, like a battering Ram, run it up the board, get onto an objective or just tie up enemy units. 
Maybe that's an expensive way of doing it, but it's got that added use if you wanted to use it. So for me today, I'm going to be choosing the Doomsday Art. So guys, that is the end of the video today. Make sure you like and subscribe on your exits. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.